Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So let's see if, if it shows up. Okay. Mm -hmm. The post just turned. Um, sure. Live. What? Okay. So hey, everybody. So we could just we're just gonna keep the conversation in English. And if there's anything that I need to translate badly enough, I'll probably just say a bit in in Burmese. So I hope that's fine with your audience. Um, yeah. Okay. So we have uh, Vanessa here. Hello, everybody. My name is Durain. Um, I'm the host of uh, Your Empowered Life page, and I've been chatting to people. Um, to share their experience of personal growth journey and any insights that they have in terms of you know personal empowerment. So uh, today we have my good friend Vanessa Jane Patrick. <laughs> Thank you for coming on to the show uh, and sharing a bit about your yourself and and your wisdom and what you do. What? Yeah. Yeah, I'm always jumping at these sort of opportunities. You know me. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, excited to um, join you and uh, get to hopefully create a little bit of magic for your audience and hope it's of value. Thank you. That would be valuable, yeah. Um, okay, so what would you like to start with? Uh, just can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Um, yeah. Yeah. Sure, sure. So, um, so I am a personality profiler, a, a speaker, a trainer, and a coach. I run the Limitless Potential Academy. And basically what that's all about is helping people to get in connection with what authentically inspires them and be limitless in their pursuit of what inspires them. Um, and basically, and the short story is that that's uh, why I'm so passionate about that is because of my own growing up not knowing what the hell I wanted to do with my life mm -hmm. and not seeing any other pathway forward other than, you know, become a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer, my dad would have loved. And, um, yeah, and so that's why I'm ultimately passionate about helping others, you know, tap into what they're actually inspired by and not living to the expectations of the world around them. Yeah. You're on a podcast and do all sorts of stuff um, that, yeah, so – but grateful to be connecting with Therain and reconnecting because we've um, done some studies together. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, so I guess we would just like to start with, we can talk about, you know, um, going back to your passion and that you feel passionate about sharing, um, helping people discover their passion and what they're meant to do and be being authentic. Right, because that that's one of my big things as well is is um, authenticity um, and really knowing yourself, being self aware enough to 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 believe in what you believe in and stand for what you believe in and actually follow your passion. Um, yeah, that's what I love people to do. So thank you. Um, all right, so um, can we just start with a bit of um, gratitude because that's what I've been thinking is is you know it's because it's a habit that i have to develop for myself is to be in this gratitude in the hard space right um yeah so i want people who are tuning in and listening to also share what they're grateful for just one thing it doesn't matter if it's big or small it doesn't have to be anything big it's whatever you're grateful for and please share in the comments and Vanessa, what, what do you say you're grateful for right now? Um. Hmm. Well, honestly, it has something to do with what I just shared with you before we went live, which is um, my growing self-awareness. Mm -hmm. Because today has been a particularly massive day for me in my own personal growth. And I feel like everything in my life has kind of been leading me to this pretty amazing point to be able to, go to a place that previously might have been a bit terrifying and scary and then actually find some real value in that. So right in this moment, that's what I'm most grateful for, just um, my ability to have some higher level realizations that are going to make an impact in the work that I do and the person that I am. 
So I've got a lot to be grateful for today. <laughs> That's awesome. What, about, what are you most grateful for? I'm most grateful for, I think we, we had a similar thing because um, it's like I was just thinking because I, that, that's what I came up with by um, um, preparing for, for the talk, uh, for the, you know, for the live and then while I was having a shower this morning is um, I'm grateful for my journey, you know, to be able to have the conversation that we're going to be having, um, you know, the, the awareness, the growth that I've done, the investment that I've made in myself. Um, even though going through the journey, it's not, it's not pretty. It wasn't pretty. <laughs> you know, it's um, it takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of, um, I guess, the, you know, the 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 doubt, the self doubt, yeah, and all these um, negative a view of yourself. It's like, what am I doing, right? It's like, what is this for? And yeah, it's it's only like Steve Jobs who says, you know, it, you can't connect the dots moving forward. You can only connect the dots looking back once you've been through the journey. It, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's that gratitude that I have for everybody that play a part in my, on my journey to help me. That, that includes you as well, which is what we're doing here. Um, uh, yeah, so yeah, that's what I'm grateful for is, is all the awareness that I have not in not from the place of you know, you all look at me you know whatever it's just from from the place of i'm really grateful for the things that i've been through and the people who taught me these lessons that has allowed me to just dig deep and go deeper into my own you know journey and do the healing um personal growth so that i can be so that we can have this valuable conversation i hope it's going to add value to your audience to my audience right Totally. And that's such beautiful gratitude and um, very much in alignment with um, our connection, right? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. we were just the other day about we connected and met like must three or so years ago, four years ago, back in 2017. Um, yeah. yeah and, uh, you know, who we both were back then. Mm -hmm like worlds different to who we are right now and it's because of like you said the journey that we've both been on mm. and the people that um have been in our lives and connected and and the impact that we've even had on one another mm -hmm. um yeah it's just yeah there's so much to be grateful for when you commit to growth right and that's Definitely. what it's about because just kind of stay they just want to stay the same they just want to keep that homeostasis they just don't want to change and they fear the unknown and you and i have done that too right yeah the self doubt the fear the, the self-judgment like the, the holding back the, the all the self-deception yeah. all of it mm. but the difference is is that we've actually had the courage to take a step forward and through that uncertainty, when we do face our deepest fears and we do take a step forward, even though it's terrifying, I don't know, I can speak only from my own experience, but also with the people that I connect with and I, you know, dive into the worlds of and how their journey unfolds, it, it's the common consensus that, you know, we get to this place of certainty within. Mm -hmm that courage to to break through that self-doubt right and and take a meaningful step towards what we're inspired by and um and that ultimately i feel like life is a series of those stepping forwards and gathering of certainty within the self so that you can have that internal conviction and that freedom to continue to pursue a life that would actually be fulfilling that's amazing so, yeah definitely um I would really love for you to share um, because that that wanting to give up when you're going through what you're going through because you can't see what the next step is or you can't see what the the purpose of what you're going through is for. Um, yeah. It's like how do you deal with that? Because I have my own experience of wanting to give up, but then these I think I'll maybe just faith in in that this has a purpose even though i don't see it now that that's for me personally but we can elaborate on that um i would love to know like how do you do that to just keep going 
and not when you're feeling like giving up. You know, it could be when you are pursuing your goals, right? Sometimes you don't feel deserving of your goals. Sometimes you don't feel like I don't have enough, or it's not for me, or I don't have what it takes. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love for you to share just maybe one or two examples, or you know, just a high level way you think through it. Absolutely, because I think the first step is just awareness that that's human nature,、mm -hmm. right? Human nature. You're not going to be, you know, like there's a reason why that comes into play, and I've had to train myself to know that it's scary moving forward. It's scary changing, but at some point you have to start to gather the experiences of. When you have felt that way, where you wanted to give up, you wanted to throw up, throw in the towel, you wonder what the hell you're even doing it for. Is it even worth it?、Mm -hmm. And then those times across the timeline of your life, and reflect back and realize how many extraordinary moments occurred after that feeling, right? Like,、yep. and then get an understanding as to how that fear is fleeting, and. You know, and and basically that's what I've learned to do over time is like, oh, that's happening again. I feel like I don't want to do it. I like I literally <laughs> week had a couple of moments where I was on the couch a couple of times. Yeah. And I, really just, you know, that's a natural human fear response.、Mm -hmm. I froze. Right. Yeah. Some of us want to get into flight, right? And that's you know dissociating from the experience and just go distract ourselves with something. You know, some of us want to, you know. Um, the the latest one I've been focusing on is、um, fawn, right? So、mm. most of us you can fight, flight, or、um, freeze.、Yep. But kind of newer in psychology to look at fawning,、mm. right? And fawning is just pleasing everybody else, living、mm. to the expectations of everybody else, trying to, you know, make a life for yourself by living for everybody else. But that only leads you further and further away from. What authentically inspires you?、Yeah. What would be a life for you?、Mm -hmm. And at some point, you just have to take responsibility and go. You know, I'm the one to change my life. I could throw in the towel, but how's that an improvement, right? Like,、yeah. and and like you said as well. You know, having that faith. But I feel like that faith comes with a clarity of vision, and that's why. Ooh, love that. Yeah. And that, that a huge part of the work that I always start with people, like I don't think you can skip over this part. You have to know what you value,、mm -hmm. and you have to have a vision that's in alignment with what you value. Definitely. And and you know and connected with that is you know understanding your past and how everything has impacted you on an emotional level.、Um, basically, those three elements. If you don't clear the past. And get clear on what is meaningful to you. You can't create a future that really pulls you forward. That's authentically inspired. So, no matter where you are on the personal development journey, if you're only at the very, very beginning, that's that's your work. And there's a lot to do there. You don't need to really,、um, you know, go much bigger than that to begin with, right? That lays the foundation, and that's what. Ultimately, if you have those feelings of wanting to give up, just go ask yourself: Okay, am I caught in the past? How clear am I on what actually matters to me? What's meaningful to me? And do I even have clarity on what I want to do in my future? Who am I? What do I want? Do I have the courage to go after it? And so, that's my. That's my long-winded answer. But no, oh, that—that's perfect. Oh my god, there are so many things that I want to dive into right now. From from what you've just said, the clarity of vision, knowing yourself well enough to know what you really want, and then、um, what did you say about the vision and the the value, right? Because that that I think that's my thing as well. Is is um so for me, I learned it from Dr. John D. Martini the the vision bit, right? He taught me a lot in terms of getting clear on your vision,、um, and so. That's what I want to dive into: is the vision plus the value is knowing yourself and and what you value, right?、Um, I always say to my clients、um, that the, you have to know what you value and you have to align it with your vision, right? Clarity of the vision. That's where you you connect. That is where the path is, 
right? That's where you don't deviate whatever comes up because you know where you're going and you know why you're going there, right? Exactly. Love it. I think the only filter you want to use in life is the filter of your authenticity. Mm. You know, People think, okay, in order to get success, on, in order to get love, in order to get approval and acceptance, I have to be what the outside world tells me to be. Yeah. And I spent the first 25, if not closer to the age I am now at 33, you know, like living to that, right? And yeah. every it Didn't it's we like, all? Oh, totally. I'm, I'm still going through that, you know, up to a level where um, you're still – questioning yourself because it, it, it works in layers I guess like the, you know once you peel one layer worked on that and you think you're good and then the next layer comes up it's like yeah. can I swear <laughs> it's like fuck I'm still going through the same <laughs> thing yeah. you know, there's always another layer and that actually excites me because to me yes. it's a new level of freedom mm -hmm. It's like I want to be aware. Like I'm willing to go what where it's tough. And um, I, I had somebody in my life recently uh, give this a really good term, which is, you know, when you have some a new level of self awareness, it doesn't feel comfortable like what most people want. No. And saying how insulting it is. He calls them like his moments of like that was a really insulting moment. And I was like, I'm going to use that right because um, there insulting is moment. When you, when you get a moment of realization of why you've been doing what you've been doing and it's for all the wrong reasons or it's fear-driven, yeah. it's insulting, but it's also it smacks freedom. You, smacks you in the yeah. face, right? Exactly. Rude <laughs> yeah. Awakening. yeah. Rude <laughs> awakening, yeah. What you were asking me in regards to that connection point between values and vision, mm -hmm. you can't create a vision without knowing what your values are. At least you can right? Like you can set a vision for yourself and a goal, but I'll tell you this, if you don't know what matters to you as an individual, if you don't know what your values are, and I've been working on a higher level of clarity, that's going to be like a document that you keep coming back to and keep assessing as you evolve. Mm -hmm. if, if you're not clear on that, whose vision are you creating and trying to live to? Because it's not Definitely. yours. Yeah. You know, so yeah, that's that's why you gotta gotta start with your values and then get into the vision. Mm. Love it. Um, so, could you just give one tip, something that's effective, something that's not very taxing? Because you know, it's a it's deep work. You know, finding your value, you need feedback from someone that who can lead you. Um, right, that's what something you do with your clients, right? Um, it's getting help helping them get clear on the values. Um, so, can you just give our audience one tip on how to start doing that process of getting clear on your values? Yeah, totally. So, um, I kind of want to give you two, but they're kind of interconnected. That, yeah, we we'll love that. No, the more the more the merrier. The more the merrier. The more the better. Love it, love it. All right. So, the easiest, simplest, most simplistic way mm -hmm. is to just think about. Look at well, it's all it's actually interconnected, so it's kind of like um, I'll give you the process of doing it. So, basically, yeah. what you want to do is reflect back through the timeline of your life and you want to go back to those memories that really inspired you. Love it, like what moved you the most. Like, I'm even getting emotional thinking about it. Like, you want to get to those points where it was just like it was so moving and. I'll share with you guys an example so you can see this. But like what I would do is I would take a piece of paper mm -hmm. and and I just like literally draw a line in the middle. All right, I'm gonna just give me one sec. I'm gonna follow follow you cool. and what you do. All right, so a line straight across the middle, so the horizontal page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then on the left hand side, put zero right the age when you were brought into this world when you were only age zero on the left hand side and then on the right hand side you want to put the age that you are today mm -hmm. all right and then, so 29 yep. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think i'm turning 37 now yeah so anyways you are, are you i am i thought it was like the exact same age oh well yeah i'm 33 
I don't mind being yeah, 33 great, again. Great. All right, all right. I don't, I don't feel 37, by the way. <laughs> I feel like I'm 29. I, I feel 19 and I'm 33, so... <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> okay. Um, so basically what you want to do, and this is a process that I'd say, like, for people to, like, like actually give themselves an hour of just uninterrupted time, like, put on... Music that moves you. I like Han, Han Zimmer, right? Oh, like anything. yes. Oh my God, Rada. Yeah, like, yeah. That, yeah. That, that that one's mine. My favorite. That's yeah. the thing that I the keeps me keeps me nah. keeps me going in the gym. Yes. Um, yeah. Anyways, go ahead. Yeah. Perfect. So put Keep on your music. Like set an uninterrupted zone. Like have your favorite drink, like put that music on, be comfortable, whatever. And then really just go into this. And the the idea is, is you want to pinpoint moments of inspiration throughout the timeline of your life. So whatever comes to play, you might want to work backwards. You might go, wow, like I just got inspired by this thing um, like a, a year ago or something and I want to tag that in so I mark on the timeline mm -hmm. 32 I had this really inspiring moment and this is what happened um, or maybe when you were 10 years old this really inspiring thing happened what I'll give you my most inspiring example that has been, become a common theme in my own life and it's been kindness between strangers Ooh. so and and where that's I can I can pinpoint so many different times on my timeline from being so young and witnessing the kindness between strangers or having a stranger be kind to me, mm -hmm. um, being at a Tony Robbins event and witnessing him taking somebody through who's been at the edge of suicide and watching him get involved and bring out and awaken that person to their greatness yeah. and just yeah, hearing you say that, I get the uh, the goosebumps. I know you're <laughs> because um, you know his trainings. Uh, I know what it's like uh, to actually see him take people through. Yeah, you know, someone who doesn't have a will to live to actually find help people find that and and just change their life like that. Yeah, and I'm gonna get Amazing. emotional about this because it's okay. we're allowed to cry. It's like yeah, yeah. But something that came up for me in the deep. Deep, probably the deepest work I've ever done in my life this morning. Mm -hmm. And something that came, a message that came up for me was that love saves lives. And it's so true, right? Like it's it's so true. And that's, it's really in the moments that inspire me the most. And, and what you're looking for when you go back through the timeline of your life is you're looking for those tears of inspiration, you're looking for what really moves you, like what makes your, you know, your chest heat up or, you know, whatever happens for you on a physiological level that just connects you to how meaningful that was. Something that gives you um, the goosies. Yeah, gives you the goosies, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So uh, yeah. what Vanessa is saying, uh, I'll just recap a little bit, is just, just so that I have, I understand you properly, is, is, yep. Go through, go back through your time, your your life, and actually um, the timeline of your life, right? So um, something like this, you start with zero, and then going back through to where you are right now, um, and then um, you know just think about all the inspirational moments, moments that impacted you, moments that you you felt very emotional about. Um, whether it's you know something that jerks you to tears or something that gives you goosebumps, all these moments, remember them and and start discovering why they make you feel what you felt. Mm -hmm. Would that yeah. be yeah okay? Yeah, and and why you want to do this like is because. If you get to the core of what moves you as an individual, mm -hmm. you're going to have that energy and that courage to pursue your greatest inspirations. And when you are disconnected from what inspires you and you're doing what most of society does, which is live to the expectations of others, and if you want some statistics around this, a book that I recommend is by Bronnie Ware. 
I love um, it. And, yeah, the top five regrets of the dying. Yes. And basically, the number one regret of the dying from she was a palliative care nurse, so she she looked after people at the end of their life when they were, um, you know, right at the right at the end, and she asked uh, thousands of people, "What do you most regret?" from your life and with all the data that she collected there were these five particular common themes in um, our regrets as humans and the number one regret of the dying is I wish I had have had the courage to live a life true to myself rather than one I felt was expected of me mm. and if you really take those words to heart you'll realize okay I've got two paths here I can live how most people do in this mindless way of just what's going to get me the acceptance and approval from my parents, from my the person that I'm attracted to, from my friendship groups, from society, whatever. Um, and I can see like there's people that have come before me that have shown me, hey, this is what happens at the end of that path. You got a lot of regrets, right? right. And there's nothing to do about it at, the, at that point. Um, and most people think that's the easy path. So they're just, oh, you just tell me what to do. I don't know how to mm. discover who I am and what I want. That's tough. Mm. I, just, I just want to tag it. We just kind of, yeah. I just want to tag it as a, taking responsibility. We, we can go back to that. So please keep going. Yeah, yeah of course. Um, so basically, that's one path, right? And um, the other path is do the work now so that you can be clear on what you're moved by, what you're inspired by, and having the, it'll generate the courage that's necessary to take action and design your life in that direction. And you'll be somebody who gets to the end of your life feeling fulfilled, right? Feeling like, well, wow, like I made the impact that I wanted. I lived mm. authentically connected in relationships with who I actually am and not in some version of who I thought they wanted me to be. Yeah. To me, that's, that's, that's living your life. And that's actually um, the easier path, right? Like I mentioned this path, just going with the flow of like what everybody else wants mm. and people think it's the easy path. I always say the easy path always becomes the hardest path in the long run. Yes. Oh, I love that. Yeah, because yeah. Um, I heard someone once said, um, you know, if you want life to be easy, live it the hard way. And if you want <laughs> life to be hard, live it the easy way. So the easy way is just going with the flow of what your family, your community, your culture want without actually thinking for yourself. Because it, it's actually hard work to really think for yourself and, yeah. and do the work of actually I'm healing, getting deep into, okay, is that what I really want or is that what my culture, my family, the environment I grew up in, this is, I'm not, I'm not uh, this is just part of what growing up is like for, for I think, for majority of human beings, right? It, it's because parents think they, they want the best for you, so they do the best that they can to give you what they think is best for you, but that end up actually programming you and and you know conditioning you to to follow what they think is best for you but might not necessarily be what you want for yourself and what is going to make you happy right totally and that's the thing we're all imperfect human beings on our own journeys and you know with a lot of, of our own healing work to do and yeah. we can can't live any differently than what's going on inside of ourselves so of course we project that onto our loved ones the people that we love the most mm -hmm. you know um, but a simple way of looking at this is you're gonna have conflict and chaos in your life it's inevitable oh, yes. but do you want to have that conflict and that chaos do you want to help? Do you want to have that in your external world where you got to mitigate the conflict mm -hmm. or do you want to that and carry that within yourself and you take on all the chaos and the conflict inside of yourself um, but you're kind of maintaining harmony in your external world mm. do you want within or do you want harmony outside at the expense of conflict within right yeah. so it's important to look at it that way and and i think you 
we can talk about it, right? Oh my God, yes. Experience it. Like I lived majority of my life with complete chaos within. Because I you're trying to form people please and maintain the outside harmony with, with your peer group, with the environment that you're in. That's, oh my God, there's so many points that I want to, you know, just deep dive into. Um, we're going come to come back to all of them. But right now, um, I think it would be beneficial for our audience to talk about, for, for us to talk about the like, people pleasing to, to yeah. you know, the, the reason we do it and how you've managed to actually find your own, like how do you create chaos outside so that you keep your harmony inside? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I think everybody's got their own personalized experience of this, but let me talk from my perspective and see if this fits for people listening. Mm -hmm. Basically, I lived with this subconscious belief that my value is determined by my external world. Mm. So I carried around what Tony Robbins would call a primary question. Ah, yes. And Basically, what a primary question is, is we all have a question that we're constantly asking ourselves on a subconscious level that's ultimately determining the course of our life. And my primary question was, who do I need to be to be loved? Mm. If you think about living a life that way, you're not going to be concerned about getting connected to who you actually are at the and creating conflict in your external world. You're going to be in a survivalistic mindset trying to manage and mitigate the perceptions of, that others have of you so that you can get the love that you do not have within, mm -hmm. right? It's like my identity is connected to what everybody else thinks of me mm -hmm. versus my identity is I'm discovering who I am, right? And then so that's it's not an it's not like a okay, now I know it and now it's black and white. And now I'm gonna just stop people pleasing. It's like, no, you don't have a solid sense of self. Yeah. You don't know who you are. So you're you've outsourced the responsibility of who you are to everybody around you. Just notice that. Know that that's part of the human condition. And just set yourself the goal to go on the journey of discovering who you are so that you can, in the words of Dr. John D. Martini, you know, turn up the voice on the inside and turn down the voices on, on the outside. On the outside. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Love it. Oh, that's so good because I think for most people who are starting the journey of personal growth, um, when they start to feel because that that's the you know in terms of levels you know spiral dynamics right um yeah. that's level three work that you have to do to actually have a solid identity so that you can break through to get to level six seven right that's the do goal you remember, do you remember when about it must have been three years ago and you're like i'm pretty sure you're in that level three right now like <laughs> in that power stage like because you need to recreate who yeah. you are it was so spot on, but yeah, sorry, continue. Oh, okay, that was three years ago. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, and now we, we, we keep recreating those levels as well, is because, you know, once you, for example, people, an example is like um, people who are having, just starting the health journey and getting the discipline in to go to the gym to actually get the health and the, you know, fitness level that they want. Um, that's actually going, you know, through the level three. Level three is basically, it's like you're finding your identity, it's like you're setting your boundary, knowing who you really are, right? And breaking through from level two, which is about community and connection with people. Um, yeah, so in, in terms of thinking or believing groupthink and what you've been programmed to think and conditioned to think, you start to think for yourself and really prioritize yourself first. And that can come across as selfish for most people breaking through to level three. I think yeah. a lot of the questions that they ask is, I, am I being really selfish by saying no, by, by you know, rejecting um, and saying no to the things that I used to say yes to, right? If I don't feel like it, I'm just going to say, no, I don't want to do it. Like, is that selfish, right? Am I not caring about what other people think, um, right? So 
um, I think uh, would you would you have a any tips on that it's like how to deal with that conflict of am I being selfish or is it self love or you know I I call it self firstness first right self first right you yeah. put yourself first so that you grow yeah. yourself so that you have enough to give because most people are coming from the place of just giving 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 like fawning people pleasing. Um, instead yeah. of like really, like you said about being really solid in your identity, so yeah. that you can start serving and and giving adding value from that place, right? So you you yeah. make yourself valuable first by investing in yourself, mm -hmm. and then from that place you can give, and that ties back to what I'm grateful for. It's like what I started with is is that going through that journey of. Sometimes I have a lot of self doubt as to, you know, am I being too selfish just by thinking about myself and focusing on myself to doing the work. But actually, that's what helped me become the person that I am today, right? I mm -hmm. hope you feel the same so that we can start creating value from, from this point of um, selflessness because we don't have to focus on ourselves anymore because we are full, right? I know I'm not there yet to the place that I want to be in terms of being full myself. But, yeah. you know, we can start creating from that place. Totally. And that's such a, I really love that you brought this to the conversation because you're right, so many people struggle with this yeah. because they've come from that sense of belonging and being connected to the community or the family or the group of some sort. And then they do need to develop a sense of self and realize where they end and another person begins. Yeah, the, the boundary. Um, absolutely. And see, here's how I snapped myself out of that mentality of fearing selfishness. Mm -hmm. Right? I realized one of those insulting moments that I had was, <laughs> okay. was basically that my people pleasing was selfish. Yes. That oh my what was God. Selfish. That's so right. good. Yeah, it gives me the goosebumps now. When hearing you say that my people pleasing is selfish. That's how I had to wake myself up. Fuck, because I was trying to get something from them, right? You at face value you think you're giving. Mm. You think you're so kind and you're so nice. But if you're not try if you're not being real, if you're not being truthful, if you're not being honest, you're lying, you're deceptive, you're manipulative, mm -hmm. right? You're, oh, if you really go deep on it, when you're stuck in people pleasing, you're not really trying to help them. You're trying to make them look um, well of you, right? Like yeah. them feel good about you so you can feel good about yourself because you've got a void within yeah. that you're not after. So the least selfish thing to do is to I. Get clear on who you are and what you want. Have the courage to pursue it. It's going to be a journey. But know that the light at the end of the tunnel is if you really do want to help and serve people, mm -hmm. you need to get yourself past that place of trying to get something on that subconscious level. You need to fulfill that void within you so that you can come into your relationship with everybody else um, in any regard, your intimate relationship, friendships, your family relationships, your business relationships, mm -hmm. every other interaction you have with somebody else, yeah. you want it to be a place where you can actually be all of who you are and allow another to be all of who they are. And there's not wow. a neatness, right? There's not a grabbing for, you know, that love or that acceptance or that approval or whatever it is. And to be honest with you, like my friendship groups, you know, like throughout the personal growth journey, you lose people. Yep. But, you know, it's quality over quantity yeah. and depth and authenticity over surface level connection and that's a scary thing to consider when you're just at the beginning yes and you don't want to lose the people in your life you don't want to lose that belonging you feel like it's going to be selfish people in your environment they're not going to like that you're changing they want you to stay the same <laughs> so you know you just yes. got to and, and that's just the key point is realize that your people pleasing is selfishness, wow. particularly in relationship, by the way. If, if it's not good for you, it's not good for them. You yes. know, stop each other's times in, in that regard as well. But anyway. Yeah, I love yeah. it. Oh, my God. Thank you for sharing that. That 
your people pleasing is selfish, right? Because that's that's the surface level neediness, um, and the pretense, the, the you know the you're being pretentious, you're being you're not being real, right? You don't say what you want, and um, that in that relation that would be called codependency, right? People who are codependent in the sense that one is depending on the other for their own need instead of fulfilling it themselves. Right. So in relationship, um, we have uh, basically I would just want to touch on um, when you were saying the um, the need for approval and belonging. Right. So human beings have um, and I, I want your insights as well in from uh, to my understanding of it's like the human being has the basically three very deep core needs um, for survival. Right. Um, belonging. Um, love is that the same thing? Love and belonging? Would you yeah. Would you agree? Um, or yeah, it's it's different in the sense that because you don't if you don't feel like you belong, um, yeah. if you don't have the love, you won't survive because that's the the baby right being born needs the parents' love so that they feed them food so that the baby survives. So it's a very ingrained, deep seated need that every human being has right so it is very unconscious and having something like your selfishness like a motto like something yeah that that you used to just snap yourself out of that loop of people pleasing right is is really useful i guess well i think what you're touching on it's like we've got universal needs, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's not like you can't, like the whole, the beauty of being a human being is what we can give and contribute to one another. Yeah. And part of that is in our connection, right? Like if we weren't beings that thrive on love, there'd probably just be one human being on the earth by themselves and that'd be <laughs> how it was. Right? Like that we're here to connect and, and love and, and, you know, find, places of belonging but until you belong to yourself like every belonging that you have externally is going to be taking you away from something more connected and fulfilling for you you're not going to have the clarity you know the biggest failure in life is that most people don't want to define what they want because they're terrified that they're not actually they're going to fail right yeah. if I define and I've simultaneously defined failure yeah. But the, the biggest thing is that if you don't define it, you fail anyway. Mm -hmm. You just don't know about it, so you can't make any changes, and that's when you end up like the top five regrets of the dying, right? Yep. At realizing, oh, I did fail, so I couldn't avoid it or front run away from it. But with what you were saying, you know, um, I look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs is a great perspective on that right Framework, like yeah to, yeah we've all got those um, physiological needs you know we've mm -hmm. all got those security needs we need our shelter we need money to survive we need to take care of all of those basic needs and then that belonging and that love mm -hmm. if you want a fulfilling life you want to get beyond those three universal levels yeah you should be up but you can't just get jump above that, right? Like all of us need to be able to pay the bills. We need to take care of our loved ones. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We need to stand on the shoulders of our survivalistic needs yep. so that we can create fulfillment mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, transcend to the higher levels of Maslow's pyramid. Yeah. Yeah. And, and get to self-actualization is to create what you're here to create as a human being, um, your purpose, right? Mm -hmm. So I love it. So yeah. the for 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 people who are not aware of the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the 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 base level is survival. Is that so? Your yeah, food, your, your physical needs, physical yeah, needs, like your yeah, yeah. So yeah, like your food, air, water, food, water, shelter, um, right? And then the second yeah. level is um is that kind of security. Yeah, so yeah. that's more about, um, yeah, like, you know, having an income, mm -hmm. taking care of your family, having the house, you know, um, just having your needs on that security level. Yep. Um, taking, yeah. And then level three is esteem, is that? 
No, that's um, love and belonging comes mm. into play. Next. Okay, right, love and belonging. So, yeah, your so family relationship. Connection, yeah, love and belonging, and then the esteem level comes is after that. Yeah, significance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, most people just stay at those bottom three, right? Yeah. Like just in, they just take care of their, get some food, they go to house, yep. you know, and they've got their family, right? But mm. but that's kind of um, that's where you can survive but you're not thriving right yeah. like once you've built above when you go above that like you're saying with self-esteem mm-hmm. and also um self-actualization like reaching your potential in all areas of your life um that's that's where you get to fulfillment and actually maslow right before he died he actually added another little element to the very very top yeah um which is self-transcendence so mm. which because you, you're going through this life building this identity and getting to know who you are and then eventually getting to a place where, oh, none of that actually matters. <laughs> well, that's the paradox of life, right? It's like yeah. all these, it's like we are very significant yet very insignificant as, as, as human beings, right? Yeah. So you think you're all that, you know, look what I'm doing. Um, and at the same time, it's, it's, well, none of it really means anything. Yeah. In a sense, because you know, just like when we when we zoom out into uh, the galaxy Milky Way and look at the Earth from that perspective, it's like this tiny little speck. Whereas you know, um, where we hear everything is real and this is your reality, and you have all these dramas and problems and <laughs> yeah, love it. Um, I really want you to touch on. I, Okay, so we digress, I guess, your second tip. So this is the first tip is to actually go through your life and timeline yeah. and really think about what inspires you. Um, yeah. Do you want to add the, because the, the healing work, like with your traumas, your voids, like what you feel like you didn't have or what you feel like, you know, all these negative experiences that you've had that you think shouldn't have happened to you. Yeah. Or is that is that part of the second tip, or do you want to go to the second tip first in in finding your value? Yeah, I mean the value one that was kind of the integration of the two tips that I was going to give. So, ah, okay. and I think that that's a that's a good starting point. So you want to awesome. go into we'll transition into trauma and healing and and yeah, all I, that. Yeah, I, I think I just want to highlight the importance of doing doing that work of healing because trauma because with the normal I, I think society. Um, where people are still not aware of how the well technical term in in the literature is called adverse childhood experiences like ACE and how that affects your your mortality in terms of like having diseases um, once you go past a certain age like how for example diabetes um, you know heart disease all these things are affected by your childhood um, traumas so people, yeah. for example, addiction, right? Different type of addiction. Um, really? Yeah, and people need to be aware of that. And I want to highlight that and make that, just want you to touch on like what your view on he- doing the healing work, trauma work. Um, yeah, so all these yeah. good stuff that, that awesome. we've been doing. Yeah, been doing. okay, cool. All right. Let's do it because... And just on addiction, because I see addiction as a symptom of um, really a, a, an escape from a self-degrading mind. Mm. That's how I that's how I look at it. And we have we degrade ourselves internally because we're not be, being ourselves, right? Like it's very hard to love yourself when you're not being yourself. Mm-hmm. And so we know when there's a sense of disconnection or we're not doing the things that move us in a direction that will be fulfilling for us so it's almost like there's I look at it as there's kind of like these two parts of us maybe the the part that's here in reality and then the other part maybe like an inner child of some sort that's looking to you for its protection mm-hmm. are you guiding it in the right direction are you taking care of it are you keeping it safe are you making sure that it's going to be fulfilled and if you're not treating that if you're abusing that child by neglecting yourself it's going to play out 
right? And so um, that's kind of how I look at what's going on under the surface. But there's, I also look at it like throughout our lives, you know, on that same timeline, right? Like that everybody can use to find their most inspirational moments in their life and get clear on their values. Mm -hmm. I actually don't start there with people. I start with what we're talking about now, yeah. which is looking at that timeline of your life and what were all those moments that were horrible or terrible or traumatic or um, that you just haven't really integrated, right, that you don't, um, you know, that they, they affect you, they impact you. And it's a scary place for people to go. That's why I'm grateful that there are people like yourself who do this work, right? Like um, that we coach and, and help people through our own experiences with this because yeah. you need support. You do, um, definitely. Yeah, but basically going back to that and here's where I tripped myself up for a long time was in self-deception, right, mm. in the – this comparison almost, right? Like, oh, no, like I haven't had any traumatic experiences. My childhood was great. Yeah, but what we got minimization, that's what I want to touch on is is how like normal society, norm, normal society, in a sense that the masses, the general uh, population are not aware that everybody has these traumas, right? Like yourself, you had a, um, a great childhood, you know, on the surface, but there are these traumas that happen because trauma doesn't just mean physical, um, right? That the emotional abuse, emotional trauma. Uh, we have spiritual abuse, spiritual trauma, um, and intellectual abuse. All these things, in different layers, right? In different um, degrees. So, yeah. for people who think, oh, you've said, you, for, for example, for for, for myself. Um, um, like people in my life still want to minimize the fact that, oh, you, what are you complaining about, right? Um, and don't want to acknowledge that we, doesn't matter how perfect your childhood looks, there are still things that are going on internally unconscious that you still need to work on. Not straight away, but once, if you're having a block, I guess, in you pursuing your goal, creating the life that you want to create, and if for some reason you're not breaking through and actually, you know, being unstoppable with that, then there's something blocking you internally, and that always goes back to childhood stuff, especially below age seven, right? From the time that you were born till the time that, that um, yeah, seven and then 14, right? Those are the ages where and you start to have different developmental journeys. So yeah, so for people who get minimized, it's like what what would your advice be in terms of even we do it to ourselves, like oh I didn't have that right compared to people who've been raped, whatever yeah. all these traumatic things happened to them. It's like my childhood was yeah compared to them, there's nothing. Absolutely, right. and this is, this is you know it's coming at us from all angles, like you're saying, like we've got people around us wanting not wanting to like hey, just think positive or like, hey, that wasn't that mm -hmm. bad, you are better than this, you're stronger than this, or mm. um got it my personal experience was coming from the inside out, so my personal experience was self deception um and we could take a good angle on the Enneagram here with Ooh, this, right, yeah. Go that ahead if you, if you want. Maybe that's, that, that could be another conversation, but, you know, we can yeah. go, go much. So Vanessa is, is, has done a lot of, um, you know, personal personality type of training, right, with the MBTI, uh, personality hacker um, trainings and other trainings and the Enneagram. So there are different frames, frameworks to actually look into your personality type and and who you came to, who you come to be, who you are uh, today. So... In later conversation, we'll probably go into that. Um, I have so many, so yeah. many questions because that's that's very important to know when it comes to self awareness, knowing yourself, knowing your strength, knowing how, like, how you respond to your environment and to people, you, you know your patterns that where they come from. So totally. we'll have to do that. Yeah. So self deception, and you were gonna exactly. say 
that's kind of like, um, so how it played out for me and maybe people can relate to this is we think of trauma like as that person was sexually abused, they had this horrific thing happen to them, mm. they witnessed the murder of someone, you know, all these horrific yeah. things and then we compare to our lives and we think, oh, I didn't have any of that stuff, my life's a breeze, right? Mm -hmm. um, and what that does is the, the word I want to mention here is subjective, right? So trauma is subjective, meaning that it's how you as an individual experienced it. Two people can experience the same event and one could deem that traumatic and another person could think that that was a great lesson or a great thing that happened. Mm -hmm. And really it's based on their own subjective experience of that quote unquote reality, right? Mm -hmm. So so that's the way I've looked at it. And I've had to, the biggest part of my own personal growth um, over this last year in particular has been in the acknowledgement of, you know, different situations and, you know, on face value look like nothing, but they actually have impacted me on a deep level and guided the course of my life and my decisions, mm. right? So, I mean, even just this morning I had, yeah, like I mentioned, like one of the biggest realizations connected to the earliest memory I can ever muster, you know, and that's what allowed me to, um, you know, going through a process of <clears throat> acknowledgement and honoring the emotion. Yeah. And, you know, you need that process. You need the therapeutic approach yep. so that you get to the personal development, mm -hmm. get the goals accomplished kind of way. But if you just jump straight over that, which is what I did in my mm -hmm. personal development journey. I just went straight to Tony Robbins, which is brilliant work, which I wouldn't be the person I am today and I wouldn't be doing the stuff that I do today if I hadn't have got there. Same. But that's one level of development, right, mm -hmm. is to go, you can choose your emotional state. You can think positive. You can create the future that you want and it's all valid and necessary in our development. Yep. But at some point, the next level of development kind of contradicts that and yes. it's like, you know what? You have to own the depth of the sadness that you have. That the you've grieving, been yeah. The grieving, the terror yes. that that child at that young age who didn't have an um, emotional intelligence to make sense of what was happening, mm -hmm. ha that child hasn't been given the resources that it needed. Yeah. You know? So, it, yeah. It's just the acknowledging and then the, um, the witnessing of the the child and what he or she is going through right um, yeah I, I yeah when we met first met so was back to 2017 I was in that space of going from Odorara oh, like you can do it you know <laughs> motivational stuff I guess I, I was way past that but um, that time I was going back into the, the, the deep work of uh, yeah. the, the internal the emotional healing work because I see that as I uh, love that you brought this up. Um, the the Tony Robbins type of um, motivation. Um, it is very masculine energy. It's very masculine, which we need because that's one part of ourselves, right? One half of us as human beings. We all have the masculine and the feminine. So the the type of work that you're doing uh, that, that that we're discussing right now is about the feminine would you agree, is the going deeper and the nurturing and the witnessing and taking care of that inner child who didn't have the resources, like you said, um, and, and the emotional intelligence or the support that and, and, and understanding that they needed at the time to process what's happening around them or to them. Yep. So you as an adult is going back in to that childhood place and actually witnessing and just being there for the child, to, for them to process right because um my understanding is that the timeline right so as we go through the timeline growing up from age zero to um where we are now it's like we all have these i think different ages right the the toddler the baby the toddler uh the five-year-old right and according to their ages all of these child selves are still there in our psyche that yeah connected back to 
to the addiction is when you are distracting yourself by doing you said self degrading is not you're not caring for that childhood need yeah. and not connecting back to the child and actually looking at what they really need to support them so you try, just yeah. trying to distract yourself all these addictions so addiction can be you know food addiction people addiction uh, emotional addictions like some people are addicted to people like constantly being a need to be in a relationship some people need to be constantly eating to change the state and <laughs> what was that <laughs> right to that one yeah been there so, so for me it's constantly need to be learning so intellectual addiction is constantly needing to be learning something and putting something um to actually distract myself from actually really needing to, to take care of that child to actually so that i feel safe internally so that I can be present with myself today, right? Yeah, love yeah. that. My mind's going off into the Enneagram conversation that <laughs> please, we have. Please, please, please go, yeah. go ahead. Just give them, give people, give people a snippet. We're gonna do a Q and A. Actually, um, answer the questions from the audience because they are like, I, I have a bunch of questions here. Sorry, yeah. my audience. Um, if we just, um, but yeah, we're going to that. So, do you wanna tell people what the Enneagram is? In terms of how you how you use it in your work or how you use it with yourself yeah um so the enneagram is just a really good model of looking at our patterns and you know as you know i'm a personality profiler so i really study these frameworks right mm -hmm. of personality and, and i look at mbti the myers-briggs type indicator or what personality would call uh, personality hacker would call it like the genius system genius model, and yeah. Net. And I look at that framework as that's the really nice way of like looking at your personality. It's like, hey, let's discover your genius. Let's mm -hmm. look at, all, let's put language to all the best parts of you, mm -hmm. right? And then I look at the next level of development in looking at your personality is with the Enneagram. Why? Yeah. Because it's super insulting. Um, <laughs> Love that. Super insulting. <laughs> Yeah, it smacks you right in the face to wake you up to actually look at why you're doing, you know, who you're being the way that you are and, and why you do the things that you do. And so much so that uh, when we were connecting back those few years ago, and I know we went through um, some Enneagram um, stuff together and whatever, I always thought I was a type seven, which is called the enthusiast, right? Yeah. And I since had the rude awakening or the insult come up that uh, actually when I discovered the, and I know we won't go down this rabbit hole now because it's super technical, but, you know, that there's not just nine types, there's actually 27. And when you look at the subtypes, yeah. there's three versions of every one of the types. And when I saw that, I actually came to the realization that I'm not a type seven at all. I'm a type three. But I never recognized myself as a type three with the general way. That's the achiever. It's mm -hmm. all about, mass, you know, um, com competitive. I didn't see myself as those things as, at all because I, I like to collaborate. I, I don't like competition. Like that's not. But then I discovered the what we call the one to one or the sexual type three. Yeah. And that was just like, oh my gosh, hit me in <laughs> the heart. <laughs> like hit me everywhere where it was painful and um and basically the type three and particularly that one it wants to know what's the best and it shape shifts mm. whatever the best is and so i was thinking i was a type seven just like in the myers briggs i thought i was an enfp not an enfj <laughs> because that's what the best is right yeah on a conscious self-deceptive path so each of the nine types in the Enneagram has this strategy to get the love and the approval and the acceptance. So mm. three wants to be the best. Um, for you, Thrain, I'm, I remember you are the type five yep. and that wants knowledge, right? Like you want to have yeah. all the knowledge. All the knowledge, that, so far away from people. and uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yep. yep. Yeah, so we will go into that conversation, and in in our maybe it's a bit technical, so we will probably dedicate a you know a, a separate life for that, just for that. Uh, would love to get into that with you. Yeah, 
Yeah. Oh yeah, let's. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, own episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. Um, is there anything in particular you want to touch on from everything that we've covered? Um, because I want to be respectful of your time, respectful of your time and the energy and the space that you're in today. Because um, I think it would be good for you to take an early break. Um, Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, just only one other thing popped up for me um, in our conversation, um, and again, coming from my own personal experience and what kind of trapped me mm-hmm. from my own growth, and it was this desire that I see for a lot of people which is they never want to be a victim they don't want to be seen as a victim mm. right this avoidance of their of victim mentality and there's a positive aspect to that right because there's a lot of people who use their victimization to get their needs met in a really unhealthy way yep. to not acknowledge that you have been victimized at different points in your existence right maybe not intentionally mm. maybe you know but it's this acknowledgement of those times where you have been a victim to different circumstances and situations is actually part of the, the the journey of not having your trauma or your unaddressed fears guiding the course of your life so like you said earlier Thrain like one area of development is we need to develop the masculine side. Mm. And like we've mentioned, Tony Robbins is amazing at that. Uh, and But we also need the more therapeutic and the feminine side. And, um, you know, that's really important too. So um, I know for myself when I exited out of the, all the masculine way of looking at personal development and I did most of my stuff on that, and I entered into some more feminine work um, by Pip McKay, actually, was when I first was introduced to more of that therapeutic approach. My initial reaction was, I don't like that we're putting, we're making people the victim here, right? Like, <laughs> I don't, like this is a, this is not what we need, yeah. you know? It's only been more recently in the last couple of years that I've actually been able to own that within myself um, and know that it's been an avoidance strategy from the growth that I needed and it was yeah. kind of safe quote unquote but mm-hmm. actually my safety doesn't equal fulfillment yeah right? so yeah anyway just that's the only other thing that popped up but love it yeah, yeah. Pip McKay um, I think I her arch, is an archetype work I think yeah. I did one of her trainings an archetype that was a I think two day seminar something like that um, so it's deep going going deeper. Is it, is it using the archetypes, or uh, it's yes. different? Yeah, she breaks. That's one part of it. But mm-hmm. um, personally, the most um, value I got from her work, um, and she's a beautiful human being. Yeah. Um, uh, but most the most help I got from her work was using more of the NLP techniques. So she's developed a method called matrix therapies. Yep. And it's like integration of the masculine and the feminine mm. which I think is really cool because NLP is very masculine neuro-linguistic programming very masculine yes. very helpful but mm. she's brought in and molded together and called it t- termed it um, matrix therapies where she brings in the therapeutic approach as well and I use those processes with my coaching clients in order to um, process their trauma and their grief and integrate their inner children, you know, from yes. different pivotal in their life. And it's had phenomenal results with people that I previously wouldn't have been able to have with clients if I just stayed stuck in that very yeah. masculine way of doing it. So, yeah, yeah I, I love that you, you, you know, you've got that appreciation of both sides as well. Mm. Because that's the work that I've been through, uh, I've done on myself. Um, um, Things like matrix therapy. I think similar to to actually the inner child work and using all these different models to actually um, work with different parts of your brain. It's like how we have the masculine, feminine, and look at what's popping up and then connect it to the the childhood memories and healing those parts. Right. Totally. Yeah. Yep. I, Love that work. It kind of like I look at our lives as we were once we were this whole thing whole human being and we kind of got shattered on yeah. our journey yeah these little shots of ourselves kind of stuck in the timeline 
And so having processes um, to be able to go back and pick up those shards and reintegrate them and kind mm-hmm. of grow up to be the person that you are today and all that you want to move toward. Mm. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so basically integrating all these parts that are shattered so that you're whole. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, we can we can dive more deeper into more deeper. Yeah, deeper into those um, take different things uh, yeah. when it comes to healing. Um, there are a lot more that I wanna I wanna touch on and well get your insights on from everything you've mentioned. But we're gonna leave that for the next um, awesome. conversation. Can we just spend five minutes answering questions? Absolutely. Is that okay? Yeah. Cool. Um, so I think most of the questions are just people saying, um, so yeah, Boyamo mentioned you, you can't create a vision without knowing your values, right? Basically just um, her notes on what you said. Yeah. Well, you can, but it won't, it won't lead you to a fulfilling life, right? Yeah. And that's why people don't have the motivation. That's why they get into self-sabotage because they're trying to get a goal that they haven't taken the time to make sure is in alignment with them. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I see that all the time with people. And I know you mentioned, you know, a lot of us can have a struggle with um, reaching our goals in life. So, you know, don't jump over your values. Take the time to get clear on what matters to you and make sure that it's coming from the inside out, not the outside in yep. with the expectations of others. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Love it. Okay, so I think the only question we have right now is this. Um, maybe I should make it smaller. I don't know how to do that. Too big on the screen. But anyways, Arno. Um, I love that name. Even I have a good position. I think the other one is better than me and he should get it. So I think he's just talking about job uh, position. It's like, why do I think like this have I got a psychological problem so I think so basically um, I guess it's minimizing yourself and actually making other justifying why the other person should get the position that you actually want yeah or so this is so when you're in a position that is good you want the other person and feeling guilty I think is what he's saying Uh right so he's thinking somebody else is better than him um, no, no, no. Di- Actually, wanting the other person to be better than um, feeling guilty for what he has. So in, Bur- okay. in Burmese, he's saying, "I'm sorry, yep. I'm just covering your face." <laughs> this is the only way I know right now to to make the comments work. Uh, so that's um, so. So the chance that some of them are going to make it into a put or do yet in a local balance in the end. Meaning, I, I think it's, it's it's about minimization and actually. Um, so even if you came first in a, in a test, um, you still think the other person should get it and you don't deserve it, basically undeserving of what you have, the good things that you have. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so self minimization, right? Again, I bring it back to values work and I bring it back to Dr. John D. Martini's work. Mm -hmm. We're not, we're, we're either living in alignment with the truth of who we are and what matters to us and we're empowered or we're subordinating to the values of others, right? Love it. Subordinating. So whenever we're subordinating, we're self-minimizing and we, you know, that's when we feel guilty. That's when all those limiting, um, you know, behaviors come into play, limiting, limiting mindsets and beliefs. So that's why I just always bring it back. I clear the past, right? Yeah. Into the past. Then get clear on what your values are and know the difference between what you value and what you think you need to be to get love, acceptance, approval from everybody else. Mm. And I guarantee you, if you just do those two things on your journey, you'll no longer be subordinating to other people. Why? Because you've got clarity on your own map forward, mm-hmm. right? We all know the, the saying, he who is most certain wins. Yes. So, you know, like, you, you want to be the most certain person for the course and the direction of your own life. Mm-hmm. And you do that is to get 
disconnect from limiting people and influences and memories, um, not in a dissociative way, but in an integrative way, because mm-hmm. you've done the work, and then get that clear vision for your own future and know that it's going to take time. Um, and it's not a quick, simple process. But um, yeah, if you find yourself self minimizing, just let it alert you to the fact that you're not in connection with who you are. And that's the work that you do. Yeah, love it. Um, so, subordination is a sign of you not valuing yourself, not knowing your worth, and feeling worthy of yourself. Yeah, because you're not even clear on, you haven't taken the time to get clear on who you are, right? Mm. Like, so if you, so you're subordinating to the outside world to tell you what to do. So automatically, you're going to, you're going to feel those um, necessary um, things, which are the self minimization, lack of self worth, Mm -hmm. um, self doubt, judgment. I look at those experiences and I go, thank you for the wake up call, Mm. alerting to the fact I'm totally on the wrong path. This is not my path. When you start getting clear and you start aligning with what matters to you, you get the opposite set of emotional experiences and, um, you know, you start to believe in yourself. You have this inner conviction. You have certainty. It doesn't matter so much what other people think or say. So in my own personal journey, I look at when I have those different experiences, right? And yeah. I go, oh, I'm off path or I'm on path or I need clarity or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Or I'm self where I'm going. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. Uh, I think I would just like to add that um, to give the example of, it's like we having conversation right now um, is I'm not, I'm treating you as because you're my friend and we know each other for or quite a while. It's like we know our level and we are kind of similar. Right, I don't see you on a pedestal that oh, Vanessa knows so much better than me, and I don't minimize right. myself. Like so I don't deserve to talk in this conversation because I don't know enough <laughs> as Vanessa, um, or whatever that that's putting you on a pedestal, right? Putting you higher than me, and I won't be valuable in this conversation because I'm minimizing myself now, and I won't share what I have to share and my beliefs and my experience because you know. Um, and you won't do the same, right? Because you see me as equal. It's like we are equal. We're just having a conversation, sharing experiences that we've had and the work that we do. Even though they're different and we have different experiences, there are common points that we can talk about. That's where we made is in the equal, how, how do you call it? Well, Level. The, the way I, li- I love what you're saying in D- Dr. Martini's words, he'd say, nobody deserves to be put on a pedestal yep. and nobody deserves to be put in a pit, mm-hmm. but everybody deserves to be placed in your heart, wow. right? Yeah. And that, that equilibrium, mm-hmm. right? So, yeah. Love so it. I love what you totally agree. Yeah. yeah. So um, for, for the person who just asked the question, there are I know. Um, so he, he mainly wants to know if I got a psychological problem, it's like if he's normal. So you are normal in a sense that if that's what you're feeling, that means there are works that you have to do, right? So in a sense, that's normal. Um, yeah, so the steps are just to, can you can just say just yeah. step by step what he has to do is to well, here, discover. Yeah, here, here's what I'd actually say to him as an exercise. Mm-hmm. is I would go, who who are you subordinating to? Who is the poor person that you're putting on a pedestal mm-hmm. and you're putting yourself in the pit with? And I want you to identify what are those key traits that you are minimizing yourself to in that other person, mm-hmm. right? What are you seeing in them that places them up on that pedestal? And and basically, we um, Martini would call this owning the traits of the greats, Yeah. right? You can do this with people that you admire, like um, on a high level, but do it with people that you put on a pedestal Mm -hmm. and go, whatever those traits are, maybe you see them and you're like, oh, they're so great with people or um, they're just so confident, like they go after what they want, right? Or they're just phenomenal at this skill set or whatever. Whatever the traits are or the things that you're seeing in that person is ultimately your pathway for the next leg of your journey 
so that you can bring yourself back into equilibrium, right, into reality, not into the fantasy of them being higher than you and you being lower than them. Love it. So, yeah, so owning the traits of the great. So that's the work that you're not owning within yourself. Yes. Whatever find them yeah so whatever that you see in the other person that you think that you don't have that that's why you don't deserve to be in the position that you're in you need to own that trait so whether that be you know he's better than me in 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 whatever way that you say that you need to own because you find that in yourself right because we all have these traits we all have everything that we're projecting and seeing in the other person otherwise you can't see it right whatever bugs you is you whatever that triggers you is you right whatever you see as great is a part of you so we're just yes. you know disowning these traits that are great disowning these traits that are we think are negative and then um that's where we kind of lose ourselves and and not seeing the whole reality the truth of who we are so love that um thank you for your for for, for your answer there um vanessa uh to help our audience okay so i think we, could, we better stop here vanessa um, thank you so much for yeah. for these. Uh, I love this. Um, you know, we can go on for hours. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I was like, oh, you and I talking? Oh my gosh! Like yeah. it was four hours or something. But um, yeah, thank you for the opportunity. And I really hope for everybody listening today that it's been of value and maybe they've gotten some sort of little gold nugget where they can build some awareness and some freedom and. Yeah, and thank you to you. Um, you know, this is a really great conversation and uh, thank you for holding the space and asking amazing questions and diving deep and sharing your experiences. So, yeah, my pleasure and can't wait to do it again. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, I'll see you in the next live, whenever that's going to be. We'll schedule it and then let you know. So thank you, Vanessa. I really appreciate you. Um, yeah. And really grateful for you um, because part of, I me mean, being able to open up as a um, as a man, I think um, has that you played a part in that journey, in my journey of because part of who you're being, um, all this um, because I I don't like people who are too happy. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because you kind of uh, partly inspire me to look at that in myself and owning it. And allowing me to be open and be vulnerable. Um, so back in 2007, when I was going a, I think, pretty dark time. Um, yeah. So thank you for 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 the inspiration and also um, I think our friendship mm. and your wisdom. Oh. Appreciate you. Oh my gosh, Thrain, that was like the most meaningful compliment compliment you could ever give me. Um, thank you and. And likewise, you know, that's why I feel like, you know, we, we connect with people for a reason in our lives yes. and I feel like like what we've spoken about, we were kind of both opposite ends of the spectrum and mm -hmm. we've kind of been able to teach each other just by showing up and just by role modelling the truth of who we are. It's influenced and inspired from both sides. So, yeah, I could totally say and appreciate and be grateful for the impact that you've had on me as a, as a woman as well you know to balance out and to be more real and more centered and uh you know not be overly responsible for other people's emotional states and things like that as well so yeah the gift is on both sides thank you i receive it fully <laughs> love it <laughs> all right i'll let you go um i'll see you in the next live bye bye um have a great evening yeah and bye to everybody thanks for watching thanks for your questions my audience bye bye <laughs>